you think of the history of racism in this country, we're really thinking of the history of power. There is a myth about the founding of this country. People want to erase American history as it truly was. Racist ideas of African people as beastly worthy of enslavement started circulating. And it worked. What happens when we tell these myths about who black people are and what their role in American society is? It is crucial that we pay attention to it. These stories all about what's wrong with black people it has so many real social ramifications because of the amount of people who have bought into the myth. If you make us the threat, then you remove our humanity. It justifies all kinds of horrific actions. How are we intentionally questioning what is being given to us and what we are ingesting? We who have suffered at this are now saying to you, civilize yourself. The myth of black inferiority is destroyed. I love all of the things that blackness has given America, whether or not America acknowledges it. That was the trailer for the new Netflix documentary, Stamped from the Beginning. And this is Factual America. I'm your host, Matthew Sherwood. Each week I watch a hit documentary and then talk with the filmmakers and their subjects. Oscar-winning director Roger Ross Williams brings Dr. Ibram X. Kendi's best-selling book to life, using vivid animations and leading female scholars to explore the history of anti-black racist ideas. Both director Williams and Dr. Kendi join us to talk about the challenges of bringing a history of anti-black racism to the big screen. We also discuss the challenges facing young independent filmmakers in this so-called golden age of documentaries. Stay tuned. Roger Ross Williams, Ibram X. Kendi, welcome to Factual America. How are things with you? Great. We're um we're in London actually, and um, are you? Yeah, we're in London right now, but we we have a screening in a little while. Okay. Um, but we um, had our European premiere last night in Amsterdam at the International Documentary Film Festival Amsterdam. It was the largest documentary film festival in the world. Yes, um, and it was a, we got a standing ovation. Wow, so that's was really exciting. You know, um, the film has been really well received. We got. When we premiered in Toronto International Film Festival, mm -hmm. uh, we had two standing ovations. We got a standing ovation at the end of the film, and we got a standing ovation at the end of our um, Q and A. Well, that's uh, quite. That's going to be really hard for me to live up to. Uh, yeah, but you can stand up. <laughs> I, okay, <laughs> I, if, if the applause of one works for you, then uh, I'll, do, I'll do. I'll do my best. Um, yeah, so welcome again. It's a uh, congratulations on that, and uh, it's a real honor to have both of you on. And just to remind our listeners and viewers, we're talking about stamped from the beginning. It's um, you're here in London. It's the fifteenth of November. It's theatrical release here in the UK, um, and it will be streaming on Netflix. I gather from the Nove from November twentieth. I think so. Yes. For so those who uh, ideally, I can say, because I have seen it, I saw it on a smaller screen, but I would have loved to have seen it on oh. a big screen. Um, and uh, if I'd known you're in London, I would have. I'm, I'm outside of London, but I would have made my way down there if, if that had worked oh, out. Oh, yeah, it's always fun in person. I mean, we've been doing a, like a junket. We've been doing interviews. Yeah. In We've done a lot of these we, because of COVID and everything. We just got so used to doing everything via Zoom that, yes, I'd love to start doing things in person again. We we have started doing it, the handful here and there. But uh, I know our time is relatively limited because I know that you, there's obviously much demand for your time, and rightfully so. But um, how we usually start off with, if we just ask, um, I'll start with you, uh, Roger, since we're talking first, well, we are talking about the film, but there's also, it's based on Dr. Kendi's book. But what is... The film, what is Stamped from the Beginning about, 
Maybe you can give us a synopsis. Uh, it's the uh, history of racist ideas um, and in Amer in the U.S. Uh, well, it doesn't start in the U.S., but in the U.S. Right. And um, the resistance against that. And it's, you know, uh, and the film is structured around, you know, sort of nine lies, um, nine lies, you know, told to us, um, mm -hmm. nine racist uh, lies. And um, it's a, it is a like uh, uh, because I've used like sort of all the tools in the toolbox. It right. is <laughs> it is VFX and animation and graphics and yeah. fast cutting yeah. montage and needle drop music and it's a very um, accessible ride through racism. Mm. And I mean, we as I said, we are times limited, so I was. I was going to ask you, what do we get wrong about racism as a society in America? But you talked about these nine mm -hmm. lies. I mean, maybe, or if Dr. Kendi wants to talk about this, what are the key things that you highlight in your book that are also highlighted in the film that you want, that, you know, you're trying to relay these these things to audiences? Well, I think I think first we we show in the film who created racist ideas and, and why. Mm -hmm. So we go all the way back to 15th century Portugal and mm -hmm. the emergence of of the transatlantic trade of, of African people is really the origin story of, of racist ideas to then justify mm -hmm. that human trading. We, we also show myths like black hypersexuality or black criminality and, and right. actually show how those who created those myths and how they're still impacting society today. Okay. And one thing that um, I won't be the first one to note this, but what was interesting uh, is that all the sub subjects and experts you bring on are, are women. Yes. And um, I've, is is that is that something that was reflected in your book, Doctor Kendi? How did you know? How did you discover? You know, what was it about it that you decided that it was going to be an all female, uh, except for you, Doctor Kendi? I know you're in the doc as well, but uh, that you'd have all these female experts, these ac academics. Doctor Kendi loves to be surrounded by beautiful black women. <laughs> that was the reason. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, when I started to look at the lists of of um, academics and experts, um, I noticed that there were a lot of an unusual number of black women, um, and they were doing the work around racism. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and I started to think about how black women have always been at the forefront of the resistance um, mm -hmm. against these racist ideas. You know, in order to protect their families, their children. Right. You know, and they've been doing this work but never getting the credit and recognition so it was a huge statement in itself mm. to center the film around black women yeah and uh, i mean why do you think why do you think it is that so many of the uh, academics who are looking into this are black women why is that you tell me i think i think because in many ways black people are certainly the primary subjects of anti-black racist ideas, mm -hmm. which has caused those of us, including myself, who've had to be have have had to experience these ideas to want mm -hmm. to really begin to understand where they what they are, where they come mm -hmm. came from, who created them, um, and and to even show their persistence, mm -hmm. particularly in a society that, in certain cases, denies. The, that persistence. Indeed. Uh, but about f women, too. I mean, you know, it's like, is it, I mean, I think as you maybe you're saying, if, if they, I think even in the film, it says that in, in many ways, it's, you know, as you say, they're at the forefront of, of defending their families. And if they, in many ways, have, have, have suffered more than, I mean, obviously black men and black women have suffered, but that women have really especially suffered. And what I found also very interesting about this is the there are characters, you know, there's a lot of great films out there, ones that have people like James Baldwin in them and things like that. But the, there are these female figures that I had never heard of. And that, yeah. that you know, and, and bringing them to life was really, I thought, very, uh, very compelling. Uh, yeah, well, I had never heard of um, many of these uh, 
figures. I didn't really know Phyllis Wheatley or 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 um, Harry Jacobs. Uh, I knew Ida B. Wells, but um, so it was these were originators, and uh, and so it was important to start at the beginning and give them the credit that they yeah. never received because they're not. We don't. We're not taught. I wasn't taught that in school. Right. I wasn't taught this. These these histories. Um, and that's what was so eye opening about Dr. Kendi's book because I learned so much. I learned that I myself was uh, also a you know victim of these racist ideas. They had already they had infiltrated you know my thinking about black mm. people. Mm. And what do you hope? Um, because we also talk about the making of the film. You've already alluded to some of you, like you said, you pulled everything out and, you know, used every tool in the toolbox, uh, with yeah. this film and it, but, uh, what is, I guess, is it the same as the book? Do you, what do you hope this film achieves? I know, you know, it's, uh, I know filmmakers don't, you know, you want audiences to, to draw their own conclusions, but what is it you would hope that this film achieves with, uh, getting this message out? Well, I think we, we hope that. People through the film can begin the process of unlearning any racist ideas about Black people that they have internalized that's prevented them from seeing racist policies and practices as the problem as opposed to to, to Black people. Mm -hmm. And that they would also begin to learn anti-racist ideas of, of racial equality so that we could build a human community of, you know, of, 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 of difference that we, in which we appreciate everyone uh, and we work to create equity and justice for all. Okay. And simply by, you know, and I guess the, a very good first step is just everyone acknowledging that these myths, and as you said, even Roger, that you, there were things that you hadn't realized you had been affected by. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, Dr. Kendi's, which book did you write first? Oh, first you wrote this and then anti-racist. You know, in How to Be an Anti-Racist, right. uh, which was the number one New York Times best-selling book during the whole racial reckoning, he talks about his own. I mean, this is a guy who's steeped yeah. in this and still, I mean, he can yeah. talk about it. I, I don't, you know. No, you can. <laughs> <laughs> He's still a victim to these racist ideas about black people. So you're, yeah. it's just, it's so insidious. It's everywhere in, and that's why the film really uses popular culture to, because it's really in popular culture that mm. these racist ideas are, you know, sort of infect us through popular right. culture, through uh, Hollywood movies, and through um, television and. Um, and media journalism and media all you know like yeah. and so we use those tools and back back in you know it was paintings and it was art and that's right. what we, we use it. and that's why these stories of these of these women are told um you painted in the art style of the of the period because it was art that is, was the language that you know we used back you know yeah. back in um Phyllis Wheatley yeah. was writing poetry. Yeah. Well, I mean, now that we're talking about all the uh the the t the tools in the toolbox, I mean, um how do you I mean, Roger, how do you go about how do you approach it? I mean, I, how did you get involved with this project, but also how do you approach, you know, you've had great you you know, your films are very compelling about subjects, but how do you go about making a documentary about a book? You know, how do you approach um, that? It's really hard. Yeah. And I, I like the challenge uh, of that, um, and you know, there's not a lot of um, documentaries that that really dive deep into the um, into the um, this stuff. Uh, yeah. And I, I had been, you know, I had tackled a, a number of um, books and written. Projects on this, um, uh, Tanahasi Coates between the world and right. me, right. Uh, the 1619 project yeah. um, for the New York Times and 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 Oprah, um, and Nick with Nicole, and I, and it was a to me it was like a a, a challenge. It was like, okay, you're going to take this um, book that's over 500 pages long and you're going to make it into a nine.
20 minute documentary. That's your challenge. You're going to make it accessible right. to the masses and you're going to do it through the most, um, uh, the biggest streaming platform in the world. I love a challenge. Right. <laughs> so I accepted the, well, I actually challenged myself. I didn't. It's not like someone came to me and said, "This is your challenge." I said, yeah. "I read the book. I was I was transformed by the book." And then I was like, "Okay, um, I'm going to create this challenge for myself." You know, because you can't. You know, once you you you're at a I'm was at a place in my career where I'm always wanting to challenge myself uh, mm -hmm. creatively, and you know, that's why I made a fiction film um right. recently it's um and and it was like okay this is this is a this is a challenge um and i love that and you know and to take on a challenge and hopefully i've succeeded is incredibly rewarding mm. well i i mean i would say you've succeeded and i would say uh I mean, back to these, like you're saying, this pr presentation of these historical figures, and you know, we've seen animation obviously before in, in in documentaries, but this is quite quite innovative, isn't it? This sort of Absolutely. taking this, yeah, taking live action and mixing it with the art of the era. Is that? I mean, I don't know. I'm aware of that. It's happening. never been done before, and that was the challenge that um, you know me and 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 David Teague, the writer, we said, you know, when we started talking about this and throwing around ideas, we said, the first thing we said was, let's do something that's never been done before, which is almost like next to impossible, right? Right, <laughs> right. Everything's yeah. been done before. Yeah. Let's let's take the form of documentary and like reinvent it. And um and we loved that. And we just we just both would just go on and on about how this is going to be so innovative and so exciting. And I love doing that. I mean, I did a VR project called Traveling While Black. I okay. innovated in VR. Like, I am I just love the idea of innovating, innovative storytelling. Right. Um, because that's exciting. And I get easily bored. And I get, <laughs> and I need to be, I need to innovate um, in storytelling. And it excites me to innovate. It, 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 it you know, challenges me as an artist. And it's and it's and it's certainly more than just the animation. I mean, it's it's such a visually stimulating uh, film, and it's a combination of photos and archive and imagery, and you confront us with a barrage of images, artwork, if I may say, artwork, artwork, uh, um, artwork um, uh, graphics by amazing um, black women animate, amazing black women um, animators. Um, uh, uh, you know, music, music is exactly. an incredibly um, uh, powerful tool. And I love using, you know, I love the composition and, 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 and music in, in film. And so um, um, Nate and Roman from Wonderland are composers who are the, the composers for Janelle Monet and mm. um, her company uh, cr created the score. And then, um, you know the needle drop music and the way it's right. handled is all part of it. It's all part of the tools in the toolbox, right? So it's all part of the storytelling, and that's really fun. It was really fun making this. I mean, it's, it's it's kind of a weird thing to say. It's really fun making a film about racism, but it was fun creative. It was, it was the, the 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 creative challenge was 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 fun. It was also. Um, like hard and scary at times and at times I thought oh I'm failing and that's good because failure and fear is a good thing yeah. and you were saying <laughs> you're making a film about racism but it was fun I mean that's <laughs> I mean the, Dr. Kendi if I may say so myself you're in the film and then uh, you're the um, and you got to interview Angela Davis I mean that must have been a lot of fun I mean um, y everyone comes across very positive in my view my view it's it's i find it a i mean f for the subject matter i find it a very uplifting film and i haven't had a chance to read the book but is that something that you've also uh the book does as well well i mean i, I certainly in the book there are a number of anti-racist voices that mm -hmm. i think in many ways uplift the overall story um, and and uh, and allow it to 
seem to be a battle that sometimes people who are committed to equality win. And so clearly, um, you know, that's, that's, that's uplifting, but, but at the very least it's uplifting to see people fighting mm. over the course of history, you know, for a different way of sort of seeing themselves and, 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 and seeing the world. Mm. Well, we we only have a few minutes left, uh, so we'll be. I guess we'll have to wrap up here. But I wanted to, Roger. You you said earlier you you're easily bored. Um, I was going to ask you, what do you do with all your free time? If I if I'm correct, if IMDb is correct, you've got like five projects releasing this year or something like. You've got a huge number that I have think, come out. I think there's more. I, I think, think it's, it's more, if you if you count each individual episode, it's probably more. I think. No, no. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, yes. Uh, it's a lot. So yeah. Um, How do you do that? Uh, it seems as though I'm like, I have, there's, I have like nine lives, Um, (laughs) but actually, um, I, these projects took a long time. Uh, Cassandra took eight years to make. Right. Damn from the beginning took three years to make, you know, Donna summer took many years to make. The 1619 project right. um high on the hog has been a you know it's we're on season two it's been mm. many years um all of these projects uh have taken a long time it's because of partially due because of the pandemic mm. things got delayed and they all came out at the same time okay you know? so but- it wasn't like i've i've cloned myself it's really that <laughs> <laughs> I that it's you know it's just come out this year because things we you know were delayed and held back um during this period of void that was the pandemic. Thank you so much. So, Next time hey, we'll you'll come and do it in person here. I would love to do it in person. Um I think that would w- be wonderful and if we could get a little more more of your time. I know you're a busy man, but uh it's been a thrill. I really enjoyed your film. It's been great to talk with you uh and uh Dr. Uh, Kendi. So uh, just to remind our guests and uh, uh, just to remind our listeners and our viewers, we've been talking with Roger Ross Williams and Ibram X, Dr. Ibram X. Kendi about their wonderful film, Stamped from the Beginning, theatrical release today, November 15th, 2023, here in the UK, streaming on Netflix from November 20th. Thank you so much, guys. It's been an th- honor to talk with both of you, and uh, good luck with, with this film and, and the rest of uh, all your PR and stuff that you're having to do for this. Thank you. Thanks, all right. Matthew. All Thank right, you. take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. All all right. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks again for joining us on Factual America. A big shout-out to everyone at Intersound Audio in York, England, for their great studio and fine editing and production skills. A big thanks to Amy Ord, our podcast manager, who ensures we continue getting great guests onto the show and that everything otherwise runs smoothly. Finally, a big thanks to you, our listeners. Please keep sending us feedback and episode ideas, whether it is on YouTube, social media, or directly by email. And please also remember to like us and share us with your friends and family, wherever you happen to listen or watch podcasts. This is Factual America, signing off. You've been listening to Factual America. This podcast is produced by Alamo Pictures, which specializes in documentaries, television, and shorts about the U.S. for international audiences. Head on down to the show notes for more information about today's episode, our guests, and the team behind the podcast. Subscribe to our mailing list or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Be the first to hear about new productions, festivals showing our films, and to connect with our team. Our homepage is factualamerica.com.